Grace, an educator at Grand Circus. Welcome to the Grand Circus Get Basics video series. As a prerequisite to this video series, you should already be familiar with how to initialize a new repository, make commits, and push to GitHub. You can learn about those skills in the Introduction to Git and GitHub video series, particularly in Video 2, Terms and Flow, and in Video 4, Your First Repository. You'll find links to that series in the description below. The video series you're watching now will build on that introduction to give you deeper understanding of what Git does and how to use it. In this orientation video, we'll review what Git is and hit some key terms and foundational concepts. Let's kick things off by tackling the most important question. What's the point of Git? Why are we learning it? As developers, we use Git for almost all of our projects for two reasons. First, it lets us save snapshots of a project over time as we code, so I can go back and undo if I mess something up. Or if we're working on a project for a very long time, we can look back into the history to help remember why we did something. The second reason is to share code with others and to work together on the same project while each using our own computer. Git provides ways to share project files and synchronize each person's changes. For this, we usually need a shared server, like github.com. Before going any further, we need to go over a few foundational terms in Git. Repository, local repository, remote repository, working directory, commit, and staging area. The first term is repository, or repo for short. A repository is a database where Git stores snapshots of all the files in a project as they change over time. If you have multiple projects, each will need its own Git repository. We refer to two kinds of repositories, local repositories and remote repositories. A local repository is where Git tracks changes to files in a folder on your computer. It's called local because it's right there on your computer. You set up a local repository by running git init. This creates a brand new empty local repository that will start tracking files in that directory. A remote repository is a copy of your project that you set up on github.com. It's called remote because it's stored somewhere else away from your computer. It generally has the same files and history, but it's copied out on the web. The next term is working directory. This refers specifically to the file directory where your local Git repository is initialized. It's where all your project files are and where you need to be to run all the Git commands. With Git, all the files you want to track have to be contained in this directory or within other directories nested inside this directory. Commit is the next term. One of the fundamental concepts of Git is that it can store a history of your project in save points, or snapshots, on a historical timeline of your project work. Each one of these snapshots is called a commit. The final term is staging. Staging is involved in the process of creating commits. In order to create a new commit in the timeline, changes to files must first be added to the staging area using the git add command. The staging area is where changes are queued up to be committed. When a commit is finalized with the git commit command, only file changes in the staging area are included in that commit. Finally, let's summarize the functionality of git using the box packing analogy from the intro videos. When we create a project and initialize the local repository, it starts out empty. We can create a few files in the working directory using a text editor or IDE. At some point, we'll want to create a snapshot of our project with Git. Remember, a snapshot is called a commit. The process of creating a commit always starts with selecting files to include in the snapshot by adding them to the staging area. In our shipping analogy, the box represents the staging area. The command we use is git add. The next step is to save the commit. This means sealing the box. We use the git commit command. When a commit is made, it is added to the historical timeline of our repository, and the staging area is reset 
with a new box for the next snapshot. We'll continue making changes to files in the working directory. Eventually, it's time for another snapshot. Again, we add files to the staging area. And again, we seal the box with a commit. Another snapshot is added to the history. The process continues as work continues on the project. We always have a working directory and staging area representing the current files and changes. And we have a timeline of commits in the repository representing snapshots of the project at different points in the past. Note that I did not mention push or GitHub at all in this illustration. Staging and commits and the timeline of snapshots all work without pushing or using GitHub at all. We often do connect our local repository with GitHub, but this is not required. You've reached the end of the orientation video. In the rest of this series, we will explain a lot more about how Git works and particularly the commands you need to use it effectively in class and on the job. The next two videos help you understand what is going on in your repository. Then we'll tackle the subject of remote repositories, such as those on GitHub. And in the final video, we'll teach you how to check out your project history and undo when necessary. I'll see you there.